Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial and in today's episode I'll be teaching you guys how to get started with a Microsoft Access database. You can use any database actually. I'm going to go through some SQL commands or code, whatever you want to call it. And by the end of this two part series, maybe three parts, we'll teach you guys how to make a login page similar to this as well as a registration page. So I'm going to register here, Vertex, and my password is IamTechnique1. I am technique one. Security question, how old am I? And I'm 19. Obviously not the best security question. It'll do for now though. Click on next. And it asks us to fill in our personal details, our profile. Uh, as you know, pretty much every instant messenger these days has a profile page. Just so that uh, people can find out where you live and, you know, stalk you. That's the that's the main reason why you create a profile page. Otherwise, why would you actually need it? Okay, so let's log in. Vertex. I am technique one. And to prove to you that it doesn't work, I'm gonna just delete the one and it tells me check my login data. Put the one in and we log in. So this looks really bad, but don't worry about that. Let's edit our account. Fetch data. This is all using a database by the way. So it looks like I've got my code wrong here. My favorite movies are not Eminem. My favorite movie is Iron Man. And my favorite music is Eminem. So I'm going to change that and update my profile. Check it again to see if everything has been changed. And yes, it has. Everything is correct. And uh, one more thing I just want to show you guys. It's basically a forgot password uh, field, forgot pin field. We type in our username, vertex, search. It found my security question, how old am I? I'm 20 years old. Oh, well, I'm actually not. I'm 19. And there's my password. I'm technique one. So basically, we're going to get started with uh, a database now. So what you want to do is you want to have Microsoft Access installed on your computer. You do not have to have it, but it's uh, good for debugging purposes and to practice your, you know, just your basic SQL skills. So what we want to do is we want to open up a Microsoft Access database. Jarvis, open a database. Microsoft Access database has been accessed. See what I did there. Jarvis, go to sleep. I will see you later. Okay, so Jarvis has left the building and we've been greeted with our Access database. So, what we want to do is we want to select a blank desktop database. This will pretty much be the same from 2002 till 2013. So, uh, you guys will be able to find your way around. So, let's name this. Mm, let's name this Computer, computer Store. And uh, let's put the directory to our desktop. Save it there. Click on Create. Okay, and we have one field called the ID field, and it's in brackets with new. We can add more fields using this uh, click to add drop down menu, but uh, only noobs use this. We like to use the design view. So let's go to our table on the left. It'll automatically be created, and right click it, go to design view, and it asks us to name our table. Uh, remember, the table name is not the same as the computer store that we named earlier. Basically, in a database, you can have as many tables as you want, all containing a login data, profile data, uh, you know, all different sorts of things. So I'm going to name this table TBL Login. TBL stands for table and login for our login stuff. So our field name, um, let's change this ID field name to something more appropriate that we'll be doing with the computer store. So let's say this is the customer name. Customer name. And here we have a data type. It's called auto number. We want to change it to a short text or a long text uh, because it's easy to work with strings in Java. And we can put a description. So let's say the guy's name. And um, let's have our second field as uh, the guy's computer part. So computer parts to repair, whatever. Once again, short text. And put a description if you guys want. The guy's PC part. Okay, now we've done this. Now, if you look on the top left hand side, you can see we have a little key icon right there next to customer name on the left hand side. Uh, it's called a primary key. 
If you don't know what a primary key is, well, you're about to learn what it is. And it's actually very important to know what it does. Basically, whenever you have a primary key on a specific field, it means that you cannot have the same value repeated more than once. As soon as you do, it gives you an error. So basically, um, you may be asking, well, why would you want to have this? And let's say the customer name, or let's, let's put it as a customer ID. So the customer uh, comes in, he's the first, the first guy of the day, and his ID is uh, 01. Basically, you cannot have another guy who comes in the store and has the exact same ID, because he, he cannot be uh, the first customer again. He has to be the second customer, so it's going to be 02. And um, it'll basically give him the error and say, hey, uh, there's already been customer 1 that came into our shop at 7 a.m. You are customer 2, so please rename your field. So it basically stops the user from entering a value that's used more than once. If you look at the YouTube database, and you actually won't be able to look at that, but um, the YouTube database is basically made with uh, a primary key on the guy's uh, username or the channel name. Basically, not more than one person can have the same channel name. So you won't find anywhere on the internet the same channel name as Vertex Digital Arts or anything like that. That's basically why you would want to use a primary key. And you can change it. Right click, remove the primary key, and you can put it over here. But uh, the computer part, obviously, people can bring in like two Asus motherboards. But anyways, okay, that's an explanation of this design view. You can have a lot more fields. Just keep that in mind. Uh, we, we double click on our table login. Tell us if we want to save. Yes, we do. And here's our table. We can make it a little bit bigger. And you can see we still have this click to add new button. If you guys want to use this, you can. So let's start inputting stuff into our login table. I come into the store and I am customer1. So I'm going to type in customer01. Now I brought in my HP laptop and uh, now I'm going to show you guys what happens with the primary key. So another guy comes in, customer1, and you, he brings in um, his Asus motherboard. And I actually forgot the space. Now if I do it, there we go. It tells us the changes you requested to the table were not successful because they contain duplicate values in the primary key. Exactly what I said earlier. We want to change that to customer 2. Now let's say customer 03 uh, walked into our shop and he brought us his gigabytes. Okay, so that should be enough for this tutorial. So we have three guys here. And uh, let's save our table. Okay, so it's saved. Now what we want to do is we want to start manipulating this data. We want to add people, we want to remove people, we want to update people. But now um, when you work with the database like this, you can easily do that just by just by typing in stuff. But obviously if someone's trying to log into a program, they're not going to have access to your database. They have to type in stuff from a GUI and our Java program code has to be able to interpret whatever you typed and put it into this database. So this is where SQL commands come in handy. And how we get to that is we go to the Create tab on the top. Uh, uh, there's like a few tabs on the top. Click on the Create tab. And um, MS uh, Access 2007 and 2010 and 2013 is all the same. This is basically just looks a little bit cooler. But uh, 2002 database, it has a, a box. And on the left-hand side, you have your options. But you guys will find it. You're basically looking for query design. Click on Query Design and it tells us to show a table. You can click Add, but uh, we want to do SQL. So we're going to click on Close. And below our File button, we have SQL. Click on that and it takes us to this new window. And it already greets us saying Select. Now, when you're working with the SQL, it's basically like speaking to your computer in English. And uh, it's really easy to use. I'll show you. Basically, you want to select everything on your table. So we want to say select all, but we cannot use all. Basically, all in SQL is a star. Select all. And now that we have that, we want to tell our database, uh, well, our SQL code, which, uh, which table do we want to select everything from? Because remember, you can have like 300 tables here. How is it going to know which one to select all from? So we have to say select all from, and all of the SQL commands I'm writing in capital, uh, full capital, so keep that in mind. Select all from TBL login. You'll notice that 
that is the same as this table, which means it's selecting everything from table login, put in our semicolon, like you would in Java, and it's going to display everything. Here next to the view tab, we have run, click on run, and here we go, it uh, shows us our exactly the same thing as the table login. Um, and it's, it also puts it in ascending order, but because we already had it in ascending order, it's uh, kept it the same. So, we can go back to our SQL view. We click on this view button. We in the design view now. And uh, we go to SQL view. There we go. So that's how you select everything from a table. What happens if we want to insert something? Let's say, let's say customer number four comes in at uh, 5 p.m. We've closed the store. And he says it's really urgent. He needs to get his laptop done because he has to make a tutorial for YouTube. So the, let's say the boss puts a lock on our access file. And uh, we have to enter this stuff through Java. So how would we do that? We basically going to say insert into, and then our table name, table login. So you can see it's, it's very much like talking to your computer. Insert into table login, and then values. With the, this is every, once again everything in uh, full caps lock is uh, commands of SQL. Insert into table login, and then the values. Put two brackets and a semicolon at the end. And in these brackets, we're going to type out the values. Now. For for this tutorial, we only have two fields, and basically, when you're inputting values into this bracket, uh, each field is separated with a comma, and you have to keep in mind that the first thing you type in your the first value that you type in the bracket is what's going to appear in the first field. The second value is what will appear in the second field. If we had three uh, three columns, then the third value is what will appear in the third uh, column. So our first column is a customer ID. Now, whenever you're typing in strings. Uh, you have to put in a single semicolon. Like in NetBeans or Java, you use this double colon. Well, in SQL, you use single colons for strings only. You do not use this for numbers. Numbers, you just write it out normally with no uh, no colon. So, insert into table login values, customer ID 4, customer 04. Don't forget to put the colon at the end. Put a uh, semicolon. I actually don't know what this thing is called. Uh, quotes, I guess, single quotes. Um, okay. And then our second one is his computer part. What computer part did he bring in? Well, let's say he brought in a saber tooth motherboard. That's the first thing that came to mind. Okay. Now you'll notice that my run button has disappeared. Basically, we are in the home tab and we need to get back to the design tab. So just click on the design tab, click on run. And you can see what happened there. It's telling me enter a parameter value. This is an error because I didn't type in the uh, single quotes. Now let's run it. It tells me I'm about to append one row. Click yes. And nothing happened except if we go in here and we close it, then reopen it. You can see we have customer 4 added to the bottom. Now keep in mind if this was customer 10, it'll be 1, 2, 3, and then 10. So. So yeah, that's how you would insert stuff into a table. This SQL code is going to become in handy when we start in our next tutorial. So now that we have insert done, uh, basically this is how you do a registration page. You'll be using the insert into uh, table values to, to do a registration page. Now what happens if you want to delete someone? Let's say someone um, wants to delete their user, uh, YouTube account. Well, in order to save space in our servers, we need to get rid of their details. And uh, how we're going to do that is we're going to use deletes. So deletes, delete from, and then our table, tbl login. Okay, so delete from table login. Now, what do we want to delete? Um, so we're going to use in where. Delete from table login, where, and uh, let's use the customer ID. Keep in mind that you can use a customer part, but the ID is better to use in this case. So delete from table login, where customer ID where customer ID uh, is it customer ID? Yeah, it is. It's not this uh, SQL commands are not case sensitive, by the way. Where customer ID is equal to this uh, single quote, and let's say we want to remove the guy we just added. Um, we want to remove customer 04. So we before our boss sees the next morning, customer 04, single quotes again, semicolon at the end. And this is basically saying delete from table login where the customer ID is equal to customer 04. 
So it's going to search through our entire table in the uh, customer ID field because uh, we're looking at this customer ID where uh, customer ID is equal to customer 04. So as soon as you find custom, uh, customer 04, it'll delete them. And if you had like 10 customer 04s, it'll delete all of them. So, which obviously cannot happen because it's our primary key. Let's run this. Syntax error. We okay, so I fixed a problem. I actually have a space, um, extra space in here. So it's basically telling me you're about to delete one row from the specified table. And yes, we want to delete it. And it's basically telling us hashtag deleted. And uh, it's not how that is. If we close it and then reopen it, basically refresh, uh, you can see right here it's now gone. Now, that guy is uh, out of our database. Our boss won't catch us. So now, let's say some guy made a mistake. Let's say we were working on this guy's HP laptop and we found out that it is actually a Lenovo laptop. So we want to update his data. Uh, let's, let's see how we're going to do this. Now, we're going to type in update and then the table name. So table login set, which is a command in SQL. Set and now you type in all your your values. So set uh, customer ID, set customer ID, or actually let's change the computer part. Set computer part. That uh, okay? And to avoid the error I did last time, I'm just gonna remove this extra space. Okay. Uh, set computer part equals now this is what we want to update to um, so we want to update this HP laptop to a Lenovo so we're going to type in Lenovo don't forget the quotes so update table login set computer part equals Lenovo where where the computer part currently is equal to HP now basically what this is going to do it uh, says update table login it's then going to set the computer part field to Lenovo. But uh, if we just execute that, it's going to change everyone's computer part to Lenovo. So we need to be a little bit more specific. So we're going to uh, say, where exactly do we want to run this update command? So it's going to be where computer part is equal to HP. So it's going to firstly look into this uh, computer part column. Then it's going to change all these computer parts to Lenovo. Well, it's not actually going to change it. But uh, if we didn't have this where, it'll change everything to Lenovo. And then it's, uh, we're providing more detail here, where computer part is equal to HP. So it's going to search in the computer part field. It's going to look around for HP. And, oh, it found HP. So it's going to delete that and then update it with Lenovo. So just keep that in mind. You can be a bit more specific. If you knew the guy's customer ID, you could say, update table login, set computer part equals Lenovo, where computer part equals HP and customer ID equals customer 01. So actually let's do that. So I'm going to say and uh, capital, there we go, and uh, customer ID, sorry about that, customer ID is equal to customer 01, I think it is, customer 01, put a semicolon and let's run it. And it tells us we are about to update one row. So basically, we're going to say update table login, set computer parts equal to Lenovo, where computer part equals HP, and the guy's ID is equal to customer01. It's got a table login, and there we go. We changed customers one, uh, customer1 computer part to Lenovo. It was previously an HP, now it's a Lenovo. And this is really basic. These are the three most used um, commands in. SQL for creating a login and registration page, which is what I'm trying to teach you guys how to do. So uh, this is going to come in handy in our next tutorial, where I show you guys how we're going to link these two up with a driver in Windows. It's already already given to us, and how we can actually execute these commands and do all these different things with our tables from Java, and how we can use this in our actual programs. So uh, if you guys like the tutorial, please leave us a comment, like the video, favorite it. And if you have any uh, requests, please just leave us a comment and we always reply to our messages. So thanks for watching, guys.